Hello and welcome to the channel and this video, of course. Today, I plan to go over a independent review of the 2017 protest events in Charlottesville, Virginia. This, if you haven't been watching the news, um, particularly um, right-wing online news outlets, you might have seen, you might not have seen, if you were, you might have seen, um, a lot of references to an independent report on the events in Charlottesville, Virginia. This is that report. Um, the report itself was compiled by a, a company, for lack of a better word, uh, called Hunton and Williams. And they compiled this report with the assistance of a bunch of different groups. And today I just plan to go over the um, like executive summary section as the document in its entirety is, well, rather long. The document itself points out a few very interesting things. And as a result, I've provided a link in the description to the archive.org upload, and the archive.org upload also has the original um, file location. So you can find it on there. It's a very interesting thing. I encourage you to read it through, through it on your own if you're interested. I'm just going to go through the executive summary. So without further ado, let us begin. So obviously this is the photo that they provided. Not biased at all. Considering, to my knowledge, the Unite the Right protest was different than this. But this might be, who knows, God knows. Because it references a bunch of events, not just one. So obviously it's a rather long document. So obviously there's a preface, and it kind of talks about the normal things you'd expect from a document of this type discussing rather politically charged situation involving a multitude of different issues colliding and kind of that attempt to reconcile the two. Obviously, Hunton Williams were one of the primary sources of this, as they had their name on the top. This company right here, the Police Foundation, and a couple other independent law enforcement consultants. So just briefly going over the executive summary here. For those that do not already know, the so-called events in Charlottesville were a result of a decision by the City Council under recommendation from a kind of subcommittee or commission that was tasked with determining whether or not the Confederate statues of Robert E. Lee and Thomas Stonewall Jackson should remain in the city on display. And they, of course, if you haven't been watching the news or didn't watch the news, they determined that they should be removed. This upset a lot of people, both people who were fairly politically motivated and people who really just weren't politically motivated and saw it as revisionist history more than anything else. And of course, people for other reasons. Now, as we're about to go into, the city is not a bastion of, shall we say, unbiased centrism, for lack of a better word, even though the two are not exactly compatible either, but the point is, they're not exactly the bastion of truth. And that that really shines through. So the political motivation on the part of the city is very apparent as we move in. So obviously they've stood in Town Square for years, I'm going to assume possibly uh, centuries, <laughs> considering the time of the Civil War and assuming that they were constructed around that time after. Of course, the conflict that incurred, and here's the reasons assigned to each side by the creators of the report, which is that to some members in the community, the statues were a symbol of discrimination and violence. Well, yes, that's what most war memorials are. Um, that, that they deal with violence, and generally speaking, they don't really have very nice reasons for having a war. 
and to others they are proud symbols of a history from which we must learn not ignore. And I completely agree at that point more than anything else. And it's funny because we always need to remember the Holocaust and we can't deny the Holocaust and we can't we can't deny this and we can't deny that. And we've got to go through this and we've got to go through that. And then when it comes to the Civil War, no, let's just completely ignore it. I can only see that resulting in one thing, which is that people then claim that the United States was always, always the land of slavery and evil stuff, even though we fought a bloody war. And by bloody, I mean bloody. Like, we fought a war where more Americans died than in any other war we would ever have, even up to this point now. So many people died, both civilian and military. Our country was completely fractured. And it was beyond bloody. And we're supposed to ignore that because one side had something unpopular. Does that mean we should just entirely ignore the you know entirety of World War Two and World War One? Particularly World War Two though, because some people we really didn't like and did some not so great things. And in this case, lesser so. It was just slavery. It wasn't slavery and mass genocide. <laughs> it was just slavery. And we're going to ignore that, but we're not going to ignore the other thing. Like the, the line of logic is really stupid. And what's probably going to come of that if we ever do manage to forget the travesties of the Civil War is that um, you know, the U.S. ever actually fought a war to end slavery. We were one of the few countries that ever did spill blood to end slavery. Arguably, all to a degree did, because you had to kill or imprison the people who were still practicing slavery when you outlawed it, but nonetheless. So obviously it drew a lot of uh, ideas and opinions, this decision. And of course, this was done by the Blue Ribbon Commission on race. Oh, that's not charged at all. Race, memorials, and public spaces. So AKA it was completely designed to push a racial narrative and it was pretty much specifically designed to do that. Like, really, <laughs> the bias is just seeping through this. A group convened by city leaders to evaluate the future of the iconic statues. Now, after receiving the recommendation from the commission, which was to remove them, the city council voted to, well, remove them from the park where they had stood for years. And of course the council was challenged in court and it remained stalled by litigation involving the interpretation of state law governing war memorials. Good. <laughs> you don't just get to erase things. I I actually personally haven't been to the statue so I couldn't really tell you much but I think it's pretty evident. Now this is where the real bias comes in even from the report. The report was written by Democrats <laughs> That that should be entirely evident. It's probably the reason why the police got blamed and not so much the city, even though the police are technically a department of the city of Charlottesville in this case. But, uh, yeah. like The Democrat bias is very apparent. However, the document itself does point out a few realities that were not known at the time, and to many people still aren't known. So that's why I'm going over this. It's not just to point and laugh and point out some inconsistencies, though I will do that along the way. My primary interest is actually showing some things that are actually very true in this document that are very revealing in both the thought process, because this also provides a thought process to the Democrats living in the area, because it's evident this was written by someone whom of which reside in the area, or company residing in the area. I believe that Hunton and Williams actually exists in Charlottesville. I'm not sure about that, though. But the point is, is that these people kind of have the Democrat view of... <laughs>